mentioned they both step up in weight uh, for, from their last fight. Uh, and of course, both men under the 126 pound limit, although uh, Brendan Figueroa right there, and he had to take off his underpants to do it. <laughs> so he just got there. Uh, but uh, the height and reach advantage for Figueroa, but will that even matter because he does his best work on the inside? All right, let's go to Jimmy Lennon Jr. for the official introductions. Well, fans from the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio, Texas, Premier Boxing Champions presents a world title eliminator brought to you by TGB Promotions and Showtime. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC. The president is Mauricio Sulaiman, and the supervisor in attendance is Tito Gonzalez. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside. From Nevada, Tim Cheatham. From Texas, Jesse Reyes. And from Oklahoma, David Sutherland. Introducing our referee in charge, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Mark Nelson. All right, fans, here we go, 12 rounds of boxing for a WBC featherweight world title eliminator. Introducing to you first on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trunks with red trim. He is fighting out of Fullerton, California, by way of Ciudad Obregón, Sonora, Mexico. He weighed in at ready 124 and one half pounds, with a record of 27 wins and one loss. He has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his Showtime debut, introducing Carlo. Castro and his opponent across the ring on my right fighting out of the blue corner wearing black trunks with red trim hailing from Westlaco Texas he weighed in at the featherweight limit of 126 pounds his record stands at 21 wins one loss and one draw with 17 wins coming by way of knockout ladies and gentlemen here is the former unified wbc and wba super bantamweight champion of the world introducing brendan the heartbreaker Charge now to give instructions, Mark Nelson. Gentlemen, you received my instructions in the dressing room. You both know what I expect. A clean championship fight, obey my commands, and protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves, good luck. Referee Mark Nelson with 30 years of pro experience working his 851st wow. professional bout. It is a family affair. Brandon Figueroa trained by his father, Omar Figueroa Sr. Carlos Castro working for the first time with Robert Alcazar, who once trained Oscar De La Hoya. Scheduled for 12 at 126 pounds, and immediately Figueroa goes to the body with the jab and follows it up with another one. This is a very anticipated, fun matchup. And, you know, uh, in the first round against Luis Neri, then fighting out as a lefty, of course, uh, Castro was knocked down by an overhand left. Let's see if Figueroa, who just switched to lefty, can try and duplicate that. Punch tabulators may want to consider hazard pace since Figueroa <laughs> has thrown. Well, you talk about punches and bunches. 120 or more punches in around 13 times. Career high, 176 in one round against Giovanni Delgado. Unbelievable. And he averages 94 rounds. It's ridiculous. And Carlos Castro is not shy when it comes to throwing punches. No. He's also a guy that throws really good combinations. He's more known as a counter puncher. And, and now with this new trainer, Alcazar, I think it fits him well because Alcazar is a great coach as far as, you know, foot movement, counter punching. So we'll, we'll see how he looks tonight. Double jab from Castro, Lance, and you know, both Figueroa. Castro should be commended for taking on this level of yes. opposition following their first losses and a move up in weight. Absolutely, Marl. That's a, a very salient point. 
Am I the only one noticing that Figueroa is taking his sweet time this time? I mean, we yeah. in the first you mean round, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to use his uh, physical uh, reach and height and, and box from long range? What do you mean? Well, he said that so he was going to be a little more selective in his punches uh, and, and try and be a little more patient, and he is doing it so yep. far. And we see him already switching stances of which uh, he is, does that Ooh. a lot. A nice combination by Figueroa upstairs. <laughs> Yeah, not a bad look for Figueroa. That was a clean one-two from a great distance. Final 60 seconds of the opening round. And uh, shocks of all shocks. Less than a minute left. Figueroa's thrown 25 punches. Yeah. <laughs> Castro's thrown 31. Yeah, Castro normally throws 66 himself, so he, as, Mal, or as uh, Abner pointed out, he's not shy about throwing shots. Good exchange, and again. That was a good right hand from Castro. Jab from Castro. Nice jab to the body by Castro. Get yeah, Castro three. really Step wants back, to guys. get that right hand in. He thinks mm -hmm. that's his ticket in this fight. And it might be because Figueroa yes. walks straight forward. And he's going to walk right into that punch. So keep throwing that. Castro was knocked down early in the fight against Neri in the first round. But good first round for both Castro and Figueroa in terms yeah, of uh, maybe slowing him down, here. but uh, being more Fine. responsible. Wow, look at those numbers. 45 punches thrown for Figueroa, 50 for Castro. All right, let's take a look at what the uh, these men need to do to win. For Figueroa, got to keep that left hand up, whether he's a righty or a lefty, because the right hand will be coming from Castro. Now, he worked on throwing, uh, or the, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, Figueroa needs to get inside where he can uh, work to the body and the head. And when he switches to lefty, the overhand left could be there and uh, for him. As for Castro, you can't languish uh, on the ropes because Figueroa will just eat you up when he gets you there. And he wants to try the uppercut on the inside. He told us he was going to try and work that, and uh, Fulton landed a lot of right hands against Figueroa. Castro hopes to do that tonight. Round number two, and Castro comes out throwing a double jab, does it again. There's Figueroa from Watch your heads, range guys. and the referee warning them about the head clashes. Nice jab again, splitting the guard of Figueroa by Castro. You gotta love how Figueroa switches to left hander just instantly, Workout. like automatically, and, and he does it well. Quick, don't punch. He, he's not a bad fighter as a southpaw. Oh, he really won the good. title against Neri from the southpaw stance with a left hand to the body. He's becoming the first man to stop Neri. Great, I got it. Now, I see Castro, I think he's going to try to do that the entire fight, which is box, you know, and, and that's great. That's what you want to do against a Figueroa that pressures a lot. But, you know, can you stay, can you stand the heat? That's going to be the big question mark for the, in this fight. Hands free, guys. Now, here's where Figueroa is so good on the inside, working the body and the head. Castro wants to keep him on the outside. Break. Right hand to the body by break. Castro. Referee calls for the break. Coming up on the final 90 seconds of the second round. This round feels like it's flying by, doesn't it? <laughs> and yet the output half of what we're used yeah. to from both guys. Nice right to the body by Castro again going to the body, making that early investment to Figueroa. Wow, that was it's a okay. great body shot. And again, you want to keep throwing that right, oh, nice. right hand as a body shot or straight right hand because Figueroa keeps coming straight. He right, walks yeah. straight. Figueroa from southpaw with the right hook upstairs, left hand downstairs. Final minute of the second. Figueroa normally doubles his way in with the jab. We haven't seen jab, him do that much so far in this fight. Ooh. Nice right 
Upstairs by Figueroa. Good couple of right uppercuts, jacking the jaw. Figueroa on the inside by Castro. Neck, he said he was going to try and use that. Another one. True to his word. Mm -hmm. Wild swing by Figueroa. Castro trying to slow him down with the jab. Time it. Find that range. Deliver the right. Right uppercut's been a money punch for Castro here in the second. And Figueroa's landed that right hook, as Al mentioned, you know, as Keys. As a softball, he keeps landing it. He's in a good position. Figueroa's thrown almost 20 more punches than Castro here in round two, but Castro's connected with 42% of his shots and great exchange at the end of the round. Bien, todo bien, okay. Cúbrete más cuando entres, okay? You gotta cover lead yourself a little more. Okay. And leave with the jab. Go in with the jab and then throw your combination, okay? Carlos, vamos. Vamos. Más presión, más cerradito, okay? Tienes que ser más efectivo. See, keep moving, okay. keep moving like that. Just keep boxing it the way you're doing it. Don't stay with him and don't stay in the corners. Turn him around. You got to do it a little better for this round. Don't go one shot for shot. Use your boxing skills and you're right. Carlos Castro told us that he thinks Alcazar is a better fit for his boxing style, working with the veteran trainer for the first time as Figueroa and Castro come out firing to begin round three. And so far, you have to say that Carlos Castro has done a good job of sticking to their game plan. Yes. He's not been caught on the ropes and he's been boxing effectively. And he's doing a good job yeah. of sticking that right yeah. hand to the body of Figueroa. Very much. Yeah, so. and even when they're in the inside, he finds a way to land his, his inside punches. Some good Castro. defense on display from Castro, and both of them not known for their <laughs> defense, but. But, but Figueroa did turn up the heat yeah. towards the end of the you know, last round, so yeah, he he's going to continue and, to do that. And got close in terms of that. They both landed 29 punches going to the show stats in the last round, so they got some work done. And Castro, who has had success with the jab throughout his career, trying to utilize it here, trying to disrupt the rhythm of Figueroa, find the range to get inside, but it's Figueroa going to the body. And when you look at this, this is everything other than the jab. And it is intriguing that Castro so landing at a careful. ridiculously no, high no, no, percentage. No, 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 no. And okay. Figueroa throwing more, not shocking. Um, you know, the danger in this fight is that Brandon Figueroa could find himself in between two styles. Yes. Yes. And, and not only that, the volume that he brings in, he might even get Castro out of rhythm. And that's what he wants to do. Look, look. Oh, there he's got Castro way. on the ropes and Figueroa opening up on Castro. Uppercuts diversifying his attack. Left hook upstairs. Castro goes down for the second time in his career and for the second consecutive fight. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, Give he just long. beat the oh, guy. Yeah. Close call. <laughs> Very close call. And now here in round three Stop with a minute punch. left. Referee calls for the break and Figueroa putting the pressure on Castro. Figueroa unloading on Carlos Castro, trying to block, but he's pasted along the ropes. And Figueroa just winding up and teeing off. Not a lot of defense from Carlos Castro. Figueroa's thrown 107 punches and counting here in the third. This is the Figueroa. This is the Figueroa we have seen before, and, and it started when Castro got himself on the ropes. Mm -hmm. There's that right uppercut by Castro, who seems to have weathered the storm momentarily. 15 seconds left in what has been a terrific third for Brandon Figueroa. 128 punches for Figueroa, just 50 for Castro. The Westlake Award. What happened? What happened? We told you not to stay against the ropes. Come on, what's going on?
You gave him that round. How is it possible? This is where Castro got on the ropes, already admonished by Alcazar for that, and, and Brandon Figueroa eats you up when you're on the ropes, and he sent him down. And then later on, we will show at regular speed how this onslaught of Figueroa almost stopped the fight, but Mark Nelson doing a great job of not stopping it because Castro came back later. Yeah, he did, and I'm just curious, where's the hold? Why didn't he hold it yeah, this round? Exactly. Round number four, round three, Figueroa, 46 of 134 punches, Castro, oh, 22 of 54. <laughs> Figueroa's finding his groove again. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were just talking about him finding his groove, getting his momentum, and boom, that's when he, he dropped Castro. And it must have been a punch that, it really hurt Castro because he, he took almost Montana. the entire 10 seconds to get up. Yeah, that was, he, he almost miscalculated. Mm -hmm. Castro started this round out throwing lots of jabs, trying to establish that distance again. And the trick is gonna be, can he keep himself in the center of the ring and off the ropes? Castro's had success with the right uppercut on the inside while Figueroa's starting to find a home for that punch as well. And Castro lounging on the ropes. Yeah. Figueroa putting the pressure on him. But now Castro coming back and lands a right uppercut on the inside. Yeah, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I want to say Castro has to find a way to discourage Figueroa from coming forward, but and yeah. nothing works. <laughs> nothing works for Figueroa. No one's been yeah. successful at <laughs> no, that yet, that. and that includes Stephen Fulton. Right. Even though Fulton did a great job of counterpunching, he took a lot of punches because Figueroa will come forward. And that's, honestly, that's the style you got to do for a Figueroa. You yeah. got to box. Castro gotta trying to do that with the jab now, Abner. It's interesting that Figueroa's got his right hand glove over the neck of Castro, holding him in place for those shots. And Castro again trying to find an escape route. Yeah, and you know, it's not that Castro's not fighting off the rope pretty well, but you just, you can't be in that posture Step against Figueroa because he yeah. just yeah. is a machine. I think at this point, you, you gotta rip the body, just like he Step did right there. Final 60 seconds of the fourth, Castro goes to the body, Figueroa leaning in from the southpaw stance now. Figueroa pawing the, the jab of Castro. Great, you gotta you got continue to work down the body though, straight right hands to the body of Figueroa. How about some props to Mark Nelson who didn't panic and stop this fight when all those punches were raining on Castro and Castro is back in this fight, he's fighting well. That's what 151 mm, fights yeah. of pro experience will Amen. do for you as a referee. 30 years of experience, Mark Nelson, nice exchange here, the hand speed of both fighters on display here in the fourth. It's been a fun round in round four. Castro continues to find himself on the ropes. Figueroa trying to land the left. Castro goes to the body with the right. Fantastic fight through four rounds. Another uppercut on the inside. That from the right hand would put a, a nice big cherry on the Sunday that is the Sweet Science in 2022. Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Crawford. Let's get it done as we continue to get it done here. Round number five and Figueroa and Castro crash into each other in the center of the ring. I'm hearing uh, I'm hearing Jim Gray's mic or something. That was an interesting comeback round for Castro. Whether he won it or not, he may have. He may well have won it. But whatever it was, he got himself back oh, in this fight. Nice combination by Figueroa upstairs, but then Castro fired back with the right hand. Yeah, Castro definitely found his way to fight out of a, of a fight, and he did it really well, placing inside punches. And like I said, I would like for him to invest a little bit more to the body. But he's doing a great, great boxing right now. Puts himself on the ropes. And the pressure of Figueroa, and yet they're able to circle to his left and then they clinch. Figueroa back to southpaw. Jab gets through for Castro. Castro goes to the body. Good counter upstairs by Figueroa. 
Box out. Yeah, nice side steps from Castro. There it is. Castro putting the pressure on Figueroa. And you know, even when they Figueroa can be on the inside in the center of the ring, Castro's better off than when he's on the ropes. Yeah. Great and point. The, and at the midpoint, Castro out throwing and out landing Figueroa here in the fifth. Hard to believe, right? Since Figueroa's a volume puncher, but well, Castro really doing a good job with landing the uh, the cleaner punches. Yeah, and he had him so hurt in that round as well, mm -hmm. in the and, third round. And Castro, again, was averaging 76 punches yeah. per round compared to his opponent's 43. So despite being a little stylistically different from Figueroa, he, he's known for his output as well. And Absolutely. Makes for a fan-friendly fight, although he's trapped on the ropes momentarily again. And Figueroa finding some success with these shots. We thought this would be a, a, a really nice fight, and boy, it is. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great movement for Castro. He's using angles, moving laterally, and, and, and he's coming back. There it is, and he's going to move. Castro at 190 amateur fights, began boxing at the age of eight. 30 seconds left in the fifth. Nice double left hook, one upstairs, one to the body for the former 122 belt, pound belt holder, Brandon Figueroa. Castro fighting Figueroa at his fight. Those, the inside punches, uppercuts. Fantastic fifth round, especially for Carlos Castro. <laughs> Both of them having their moments. This is great. Fun stuff here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. On this side, he's got a little. Right. You want to come inside and I'll go outside? Let me go outside. No, you got it from there? Yep. Okay, fine. Yeah, I got it. Okay, fine. Hey, esos barrons estuvieron muy cerca, okay? Yeah. Gotta be a little quicker inside, okay? okay. Well, even though it was probably a round that Castro won, there was this moment mm. when uh, Figueroa landed that right hand from outside that really was a, a big one. But Carlos Castro would come back and work so well uh, on the inside, which is the place where Figueroa normally does his best work, landing left hooks, lots of uppercuts. Here he's going to throw the uppercut on the inside. That's a punch that he kind of added to his arsenal specifically for this fight. New blood at 160 or 26 pounds, giving blood in this fantastic yeah. fight as we begin the sixth round. And they continue to chuck leather as expected. But Castro looking for range, trying to establish the jab. And we talked about the new coach that uh, Castro has, which is Robert Alcazar. And, oh, ooh, wow. Outer right uppercut landed for Castro. And he's known for that. He's a great teacher of lateral movements, boxing. And he said, you know what, it fits me well. And, and it is showing. For the second consecutive round, Castro comes up firing it out, chucking. Brandon Figueroa is trying to find a way to him keep Castro in his sights. He's had success with holding his neck there with the right hand. Yeah. That's legal. No, it actually isn't. You know, Figueroa is starting to jab his way in a little bit more, though. And that's the missing piece, I think, here for him. When he jabs his way in, he can get on the inside and do good work. Right to the body by Castro. Castro continues to throw punches from the ropes. And see what's working for C Castro is that he's throwing the, the, sh the straight punches and the inside punches that get there right before the, uh, obviously, the, uh, the round punches that Figueroa throws. The other weapon that's working for Figueroa, but he's not Box doing it quite enough, is the double right hook as a lefty. Stop! Don't punch! No, no, no. Stop. Be careful. <laughs> Beautiful inside work from Castro. Trench warfare between Brandon Figueroa and Carlos Castro. Castro has Figueroa on the ropes now. Coming Go up figure. in the final minute of the sixth. Normally not Figueroa on the ropes, but Castro put him there. Oh, and there's the double oh. right hand by and a four right hands on the left. And now Figueroa turning the tables, literally and perhaps figuratively here in the final. Carlos Castro.
Castro. And Figueroa improves to 23, one and one with his 18th knockout. A nice way to introduce himself to the 126 pound division. I'm sorry, but I gotta say that was a bad stoppage. I mean, yes, Figueroa was doing damage. He was throwing punches, but I think Castro was still in the fight. I, I, I didn't like the stoppage, but you know, yes, Figueroa, great fight. He found his way, uh, but Okay, Castro was I, doing really good. I have to let you know that uh, according to what we've been told that uh, the referee looking at his eyes were unfocused. He didn't respond and he didn't complain. So, Al, what, what do you think of yeah, what just happened? Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm a little surprised it was stopped at that moment. You're right, though. The posture, I agree with you, though, The guys, posture in the initially. corner, uh, Castro is not complaining about it. It was, uh, as you pointed out aptly, and we look at the numbers, it, it, you know, fi uh, Figueroa landing so many uh, power punches. Uh, Castro, though, right there with him. Mm -hmm. the, the, it was a close, hard, uh, uh, well-contested fight. The uh, numbers thrown more for Figueroa, of course. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, and you said it very well, Marl. He turned that fight on a dime in that mm -hmm. moment. It was Figueroa, who we're not used to seeing on the ropes, mm -hmm. turning literally <laughs> and figuratively yeah. the fight around. Well, let's go back and we'll take a look at it and we'll, as these two men, you know, kick it around with each other. First, Castro had Figueroa on the ropes and was doing really good work uh, in that posture, even though Figueroa was landing his share. Normally, we don't see Figueroa in this posture. That's when Castro is doing well. We hardly ever see Figueroa on the ropes, but the way he turned Ca Castro. Wow. Pedal he, to the middle. Like you said, literally turned him around and he went, he went to work. He really put in punches and got some clean punches. But there it is. I don't I, think that I, he's yeah. hurt. I got to be honest. Yeah, I think he was worse when in the... In the yeah, we look again, and we complimented Mark Nelson in the earlier rounds for not right. stepping in. This is just, you can feel like it maybe Castro needed a little more time. Whatever the case, even though Figueroa's landing very good punches, and Castro's trying to gather himself there, and Mark Nelson feels like that was enough. Castro did not complain, his did corner not. didn't complain. And let's just say this, uh, uh, amazing turn of events for Figueroa to turn things around and get him in trouble and win this fight. Let's make it official with Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time of two minutes, 11 seconds. In round number six, our referee in charge, Mark Nelson, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout, the winner of the WBC featherweight world title eliminator, Brandon, the heartbreaker, Figueroa.